Hi guys, and welcome to Little Wicket Railway. I'm Rob, and in this video, we're going to look at a cheap and relatively easy way to add lighting to coaches. I found this method on the RM Web forums and it was shared by user Art Dent, so full credit goes to them. The forum topic was called Small DIY Anti Flicker Slash Stay Alive Slash Keep Alive Unit for Coaching Stock and or Guard Slash Brake Vans. And as the name suggests, it's a step-by-step -step guide to putting together a small stay alive unit for coach lighting. I thought it looked like a really good project and wanted to have a go, so I thought I'd share how I got on. I'll put a link to the original RM Web post in the description below along with affiliate links to all the parts you'll need should you want to have a go yourself. So let's get started. For the Stay Alive unit, you're going to need a BD-104 bridge rectifier, a 1000 microfarad capacitor rated for 25 volts, a 220 ohm resistor, a 3300 ohm resistor, some thin wire, a strip of 12 volt LEDs, some snips to cut the wires, glue or black tack, a soldering iron, you might want some tape or heat shrink to insulate the wires. And obviously you'll need a model to install it in and I'm using this FM rail blue Pullman coach from Hornby. This coach doesn't have any pickups on the wheels so I'm going to be using the DCC concept wheel sets with the spring pickups. And for this coach we'll need a drill with a 2mm drill bit. To build the stay alive unit you first need to tin the legs of the bridge rectifier. Then bend the negative leg of the capacitor up and solder it directly to the negative leg of the bridge rectifier such that the bridge rectifier can sit on top of the capacitor. And you can hold it there either with glue or black tack. Then solder the 220 ohm resistor between the positive leg of the capacitor and the bridge rectifier. A piece of heat shrink goes over the leg with the resistor. This prevents the two capacitor legs coming into contact, which would create a short and also protects the solder joints. So that's what it looks like so far with the bridge rectifier connected to the capacitor with the 220 ohm resistor between them, hidden under the heat shrink on the positive side. The 3300 ohm resistor can now be connected to the negative side of the capacitor and the value of this resistor controls the brightness. And that's the Stay Alive unit basically finished and we're ready to connect up the LEDs. Measure out and cut a strip of LEDs that matches the length of your coach and solder on two short wires to the positive and negative pads at the end of the strip. These wires only need to be 2 to 3 centimeters long. The red wire is connected to the positive side of the capacitor and the black negative wire is connected to the 3300 ohm resistor. With the Stay Alive unit connected to the LEDs, now is a good time to check everything works by connecting a power supply to the AC inputs on the bridge rectifier. This unit will work with both DC and DCC power supplies and I've hooked it up to my Hornby Select unit. If you wanted to adjust the brightness of the LEDs then you can always vary the value of the 3300 ohm resistor. A lower value resistor will brighten the lights and a higher value resistor will dim them. I'll disconnect the power supply and we can see how long these stay on for. So that's a good 5 or 6 seconds before they noticeably start to get dim and they keep on glowing for quite a long time. That's plenty of power to keep the lights on when passing over a short section of dirty track. Now to work on the coach. So the first thing is to get the coach body off. On this Mark II the corridor connector unclips first and then you can unclip the sides, lift this end up and slide it off backwards being careful not to damage the clip at the rear. The seats are just held on by two screws. As you can see on this coach, the toilet areas at either end are the perfect place to put the Stay Alive units. You need to drill a small hole in the seating unit to allow the wires to pass through from the pickups to the toilet area, and for this I used a 2mm drill bit. Then remove the wheels from one of the bogies. The Hornby Mark IIs have these two holes pre-moulded into the chassis just above the bogies, which are perfect for routing the wires through from the pickups to the Stay Alive. If your model doesn't have an existing hole, then you'll need to drill one. We're going to need two of the DCC Concepts wheel sets and these are pre-fitted with the spring pickups. One wheel set will pick up from the left rail and the other will pick up from the right rail. If we look a bit closer at the wheel sets you can see the spring pickup wrapped around the axle with the straight bit coming off at the end for the wires to be soldered onto. You can see on this side there is black plastic insulating the axle from this wheel and if we turn it over there's no insulation on this side so that's the wheel that is going to be picking up. 
The DCC Concept Packs come with thin black wire and I'm using this to cut two lengths that will run from the pickups through the chassis and connect to the Stay Alive. At this stage it's better to cut these wires too long and then you can trim them to the exact length you need later on. These wires will need to be soldered onto the spring pickups. I found that wrapping the exposed wire around the end of the spring held them in place while soldering and created a strong connection. And these solder joints do need to be strong as the bogey will obviously be moving around under the chassis. Then it's time to place the wheels back into the bogies, making sure that you're picking up from both rails. Feed the wires up through the bogies, through the hole in the seating unit that we drilled and into the toilet area. This can be quite a fiddly job and you need to make sure that the wires aren't too taut so that they stop the bogey from rotating freely, but also that they're not too slack such that the excess wire is getting in the way. A pair of tweezers comes in handy here along with putting a small kink in the end of the wire so that you can fish hook it through the holes. You can then screw the seating back on, trim the wires to the correct length and solder them onto the bridge rectifier. And it doesn't matter which way round these go. So now's a good time to test and make sure that everything works. When it comes to securing the LEDs in the coach, you can either leave the wires a bit longer and stick the LEDs to the coach ceiling, or my preferred option is to fit something between the dividers in the seating area so that you can remove the coach body easily in future without worrying about the wires. I 3D printed this support, but a strip of plastic card or even stiff cardboard would probably do the trick. These LEDs have a self-adhesive backing, but I didn't think it was very good, so I've used super glue to stick them onto the bottom of the support. Then it's just a case of refitting the coach body and you're done. Total cost of the Stay Alive unit is only a few pounds. The DCC Concepts wheel sets are quite pricey, but you don't have to use them. You could make your own from phosphor bronze strip, for example. Overall, I think this is really effective and you can see that the capacitor keeps the lights on for a good few seconds when the coach is taken off the track. If you found this video useful, then please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again to user Art Dent for sharing this method on RM Web and for his brilliant step-by-step -step tutorial. Special thanks to the members and patrons for their support, it's very much appreciated and the names are on screen now. If you've got any tips for adding lighting to rolling stock or building stay alive units then please let me know in the comments. That's about it for this video, thanks for watching and I'll hopefully see you again soon.